my greetings from Rome to the province of the United States, particularly to Brother Patrick McNamara. I met Patrick in 1995 when he welcomed me in Pelham to spend a few weeks to study English. I appreciate his spirit of joy and good humor, his spirit of service and generosity, of knowing how to live in the moment and to face situations in a fraternal way. In these years as provincial, I continue to admire these virtues in Patrick. Thank you, Patrick, for your constant dedication to the brothers and lay people in your province, for your ability to be a team builder, for your heart without borders, with Arco Norte and with the whole institute, and for your spirituality full of humanity. You help us to feel God close to us and friendly. Together with you, I thank all those who have worked with you in this service. Thank you to the Provincial Council and all the other teams. I place all of you, particularly you, Brother Patrick, in the hands of Mary, our good mother. Thank you very much. Patrick McNamara, as we look back on six years of your leadership, what can we say? That you've challenged and inspired us, shared your hope and optimism with us, carried us through so many difficult moments, helped us to pray more deeply and celebrate with more abandon. We all know that in a previous lifetime, you took on the role of the Wizard of Oz, a performance that led to your nomination for the Nelly Galati Award. And perhaps it's a bit of the wizard in you that has helped the cowardly lions among us to believe that we too can be courageous, enabled the tin men in our midst to grow a heart, led the scarecrows found here and there to be gifted with insight. Like Marceline, you have taught us to embrace the mystery of our brotherhood and to live a life of faith guided by the master. And you have done so by example we can point to so many moments, past and present, when you stepped out and stepped up because the need was clear and the call more than most could handle. Marcelin was sensitive to the concerns and suffering of the young people of his day. His passion has so often moved your heart and mind to reach out to young people of our day. In 2014, you uprooted yourself from a familiar life in Chicago and headed to the United Nations in Geneva to promote and defend the rights of children and young people throughout the world. Just as you had settled in and looked ahead to the next five years, your brothers in the province upended your plans and called you home to serve as our provincial. Writing to us from Geneva, you called us to unity and challenged us to look to the future. Perhaps that is why the brothers, gathered in chapter that year, provided you with a council that, for the first time in memory, was elected on a single ballot. What an adventure unfolded. As we prepared for the 200th anniversary of our institute, you encouraged us to focus on places and events that told our Mara story. Fouvier, Lavala, the young Montagne boy. Let us plan activities, you said, that will bring these memories to life. Let us make a new beginning. So many wonderful moments followed. An assembly with the Marist family, more than one pilgrimage to the Hermitage, a national day of service for Marist students, whose efforts raised 100,000 real dollars that were distributed to Marist missions throughout the world, including Lebanon, Syria, Guatemala, and Congo. But there was so much more. 
a January 2nd gathering at St. Patrick's Cathedral that resembled a 21st century Fouvier. In that moment, when hashtag Million Maris connected 11 million people worldwide, and the many local anniversary celebrations in Maris schools and communities throughout the province. You also gifted us with your love of international travel, challenging us to think globally and to reach out to our brothers in the Arco Norte region and plan for a shared future. From the outset, you insisted on having council members willing to travel. Their journeys took them to Quito, Ecuador and Long Branch, New Jersey, to gather with the provincial councils of our region and to every part of our province to meet with our brothers, board members, and school administrators. You taught us how to celebrate, how to take a Sabbath day, how to pull out the stops when marking an event or thanking a person. And you did it all in the manner of Marcelin, who was so generous when choosing a jug for Brother Ippolite. Marcelin often said, that our brother was a man for whom the world is not large enough. An apt description for you, our brother Patrick. Consider for a moment your work at the Conference of Major Superiors of Men, your efforts with the Bishop's Conference, and most especially your vision for the province and the region. In 2017, you focused our attention on the upcoming general chapter and the cause of the Institute for a new Lavala. No surprise that delegates to the 22nd General Chapter did not gather in Rome that year. Instead, they came together in Rio Negro, Colombia, and encouraged us to jump into a third century of Maris life and mission, and to journey together with our brothers and sisters as members of a global family. Patrick, your enthusiasm and hard work ensured that the calls that emerged from that gathering in Rio Negro captured the hearts and minds of those delegates who assembled in Wappinger Falls for the provincial chapter of 2018. First, they elected a council and then turned attention to several key areas, including vocation promotion, the sustainability of our Marist mission, and the transforming and prophetic vision found in Marists of Champagne. To celebrate our 200th anniversary as an institute, they moved the province beyond the familiar in answering the call to work with refugees on the border in El Paso and establishing a community of brothers and young adults in Austin, Texas. 2020 will always be remembered as the year of COVID-19. Not since 1918, when Brother Herbert was provincial, has our world experienced a plague quite so devastating. Throughout it all, you visited those who were sick, made sure that protocols were being followed, and reached out continually to break our isolation. Your travels throughout the province to support and encourage all of us during this past year are so reminiscent of Marceline and Stanislas's journey as they journeyed through the snow to visit Jean-Baptiste who was ill. Now Patrick, we all know that in your heart of hearts you are a true showman. Just look at your Facebook page. John the 23rd appears as your profile picture. But it's your ability to dream, your willingness to take risks, your conviction that the mission of Marshland and his passion for evangelizing young people continues to make a difference in our world that gives us hope, has helped us to plan for the future, has convinced us that we need to be merry in our world today. So what can we say as you bring six years of leadership to a conclusion? that you have modeled for us the joy of living the gospel, helped us to appreciate cultural diversity and the wide scope of a Maris world, challenged us to pour our lives out on behalf of poor young people. Most especially, we are grateful for your love for us, your joy de vivre, your example of what it means to be attentive to 
to the action of God in our lives. You have helped change us, brought our province and each of us to a new day, helped us appreciate more fully the meaning of Dorothy's words in The Wizard of Oz. Well, Toto, I've got a feeling that we're not in Kansas anymore. And so, Patrick, may God grant you peace, a peace that is like a morning mist, bringing stillness to your life, and may your heart be consoled simply by being in God's presence. And may God grant you all those dreams that you hold deep in your heart. Together with Marcelin, we place you in the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, our good mother and sister in faith. In addition to being the man behind the curtain, you are the friend everyone wants and the brother everyone should be. Cheers.